Hello everybody, I'm Endermore Central and welcome back to another video of OMSI 2, the bus simulator. We're back in the virtual world once again. It's nice to have a little bit of a return to OMSI 2 and other simulation games. And um, where you join me once again in Oakford. Um, we're doing a lot on Oakford at the moment. Um, obviously quite a recent release um, in the UK sort of um, OMSI 2 world. Um, it's been released on Fellowstone Forum. It is a free map if you haven't already do go and download it. But if you are thinking about downloading it, do check out this video that um, we're doing. Um, now, where we're going to be checking out the 90 route. So the 90 route starts here where we are at, where we are at in Sheepton. And we've been here before on the 87 service and runs all the way through to Oakford, um, the centre that we've been on the 55 route. The route itself takes 24 minutes in total. We might do it slightly quicker um, as I don't tend to mess around, especially with it um, sort of being scheduled on the map at a Sunday evening. So I can't expect us to be too busy. And we're driving it in this lovely frequent 14s livery as part of one of the more recent updates to the first Leicester repaint pack. The first Leicester repaint pack popped up on the top of the Fellowstone forums recently um, as it had a big update for the bailing pack. They've done the brownstone buses, um, they've done the 88s, um, the 88As, 88Es brand, and um, I can't remember even though I've just been down to Leicester, that's the reason we're driving this because I have just seen seen these buses in person in this livery and thought, goodness me, they look good. Um, so that's why we're doing a video. Um, there's going to be some, um, obviously, if I've been down there, I have done some filming. So there's going to be some Leicester videos um, from real life coming very, very soon. I'm not going to spoil them as what they're about. Some of you will be able to guess um, with sort of recent things going on down there and all the content I've done. Um, but for now, we're in the virtual world and with the real life videos to be releasing soon. So the vehicle we've got as well is 35153 SN65 OKE. That I believe is um, numerically one of the first to be repainted into this livery. The route itself, the 14s and 14As, are a mix of the Street Decks and Enviro 400 vehicles from Manchester. Um, the frequency is every six minutes, um, Monday to Friday daytime, um, so that's why they need as many vehicles. The Enviro 400 do suit this livery just as well as the Street Decks do. So we'll get the bus all started up. Now I have already started up to move it into positions so while the lights are on and working. So it says there's a job. Hopefully the ticket machine will automatically log itself in as well. But it should do. I'll wait for it to log itself in before I um, load everybody in. And it hasn't. Okay, so we'll just we'll shut the doors actually just before anybody gets on. That was felt like a bit evil, but Obviously, I want to make sure we are logged on the machine, so we're not getting in a bit of fair dodging. There we go, let's get people on bus. So that are we on? A few seconds, I think, got about 30 seconds. So the livery itself does suit the map, I believe some of the buses are in an orange livery. Um, as I have explained in previous videos, if you have missed them, do go and check them out. But Oxford is a map based in Oxfordshire. It's based highly on the Oxford Bus Company um, and based on sort of with other independent companies that exist around there like Thames Travel and things like that running. Also as AI vehicles on the map. The main operator on the map is fictitious company, Oxford Bus Company. So if you are looking at the back and you are seeing that the branding is over the right badge, that is intentional because, believe it or not, this is how the branding has been applied on the actual buses. Um, it would have hopefully not taken that much to take the rights badge out, potentially change the glass or something like that. But instead, um, they branded over that on most of the vehicles. Um, I saw one in Leicester just like that. Um, and for, it was a bit of a shame that they um, didn't take it off, although in fairness you can still see most of it anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. I'm unconscious. So gonna try and switch yourself. Let's make sure we've got no runners. Make sure we're not driving straight into a car. So there we go, let's go. So it's quite nice to have the break from um, driving the veiling pack um, as much as if it was up to me, I would be driving the veiling pack all the time um, at every single moment. Um, and I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of a change 
in between, um, for those of you that, I mean, there's very, very few of you, but those of you that aren't as obsessed as the Veiling Pack as me, um, and also this lovely repaint exists, so I was just like, well, it's a bit of a win win situation um, with the repaint pack itself. So, with the Veiling Pack, um, a lot of you will be very, very pleased to know that I have finally installed the branding patch. I'm very, very good, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, to forget to install branding patches for these things. I did it for the specs, I did it for the streetlights, and now the veiling pack where I will literally just launch the bus straight into the game, crack on driving it, a um, couple of videos, a couple of hours, um, and then totally forget and disregard the fact that um, the branding patches exist to add the realism. So I'm hoping with it being a Sunday evening on the map, um, I have purposefully as well um, driven the map sort of just before like the, the long shadow sunset um, because I know how good this livery looks in long shadow sunsets, um, speaking from experience of seeing it in long shadow sunsets. So I thought, um, partly we get to, get to properly admire it, then it may just look the part. As you can see, unfortunately, we're not fully beaming on the sun as the sun's there, but I am hoping as we turn a few corners and things, we will take advantage of the lovely light on the lovely orange yellow livery. Orange yellow liveries always tend to go quite well uh, with sort of long shadow sunlight, sunsets, and sometimes sunrises. And this little treat that's always fun. So I, it was Saffron, um, the Saffron line that I was on about, so there's the Brownstone bus um, that they've updated, they've updated this repaint pack um, to reflect the Brownstone bus and the Saffron um, line, um, the Brownstone being the 18 and the Saffron line being the 88, 88A and 88E. Um, so they have updated the first Leicester repaint pack, if you haven't already the link is in the description below if you do want to download it. Um, but they've updated it recently with the realistic repaints. They've also added a couple of others here and there. Um, but the bronze stone buffs and the saffron are both liveries. I'm very, very excited to drive in future videos. One thing I must say with Leicester is obviously um, a few years ago, if you go back, it was all pink fronted vehicles. Very, very standard. There was the odd branding, but it was just sort of within the pink fronts and things like that. But in more recent times, they've really gone extravagant with the branding. We've got sort of the saffron line, and um, there is a, there is videos coming out um, in relation to that. That is all I shall say very soon. So you get to admire that livery then. Um, then you've got sort of the brownstone bus that I remember seeing a few years ago. Um, that was very very nice. Um, oh, I don't usually line up spot on like that. I must say, I usually end up shooting past that bus stop. So there's a brownstone bus that looks lovely as well, and the 18 service that's been branded for years now. Saffron's been done recently. You've got three quick 14s that, as you can see, look absolutely um, stunning as well. And all these brands, when you see them going around Leicester, um, look absolutely phenomenal. Now this is what I love about this map, is you run these main roads and then you go through the villages. And then you've got sort of these tight, oh, don't want to map there, really. And you've got these really nice, narrow and tight roaded villages um, that challenge the driving. And sort of keep you on your toes. Sometimes when you're driving maps and they're a bit too basic, you can get a bit bored um, sort of going on these massive wide roads continually. So having a mix is the kind of thing that I like. Because as much as I do like maps like Smart and it, it does get a bit relentless when you're continually being challenged um, on these sort of these style of roads, and you do kind of you do kind of get bored of it after a while. Because if you've got a narrow route and you're continually on narrow roads, it. It's just, it gets to a stage where it's just not fun anymore. Now, if we spin that right a bit more, we'll say that's 
I'd say that's within the lighting. So let's see if we can get a lovely screenshot. In fairness, this was the one thing I've been predominantly after. Um, is a lovely, nice, um, nice light in 3.14 screenshot. Gosh, doesn't that look lovely? I mean, the trees are in the way and we've got all the road furniture. Um, but hopefully in the end product, as you can see, it adds to the effect. A livery that looks so, so nice in um, sunset long shadow format. I mean, it looks nice in the daytime. I've got a few daytime sunlight shots of these. And it looks really nice, but I must admit, it's one of these liveries that you can tell um, in a sunset setting if you stood at the right spot. If you stood at the right spot, um, it really, really nice, as you can see. So hopefully, as we get more and more brands um, in places like South Yorkshire, I am hoping that these kind of brands and things can begin. Um, to sort of be present. Um, obviously the X78 brand, the mainline X78 is still a work in progress. Um, they seem to have paused a little bit on that branding. I am hoping they do continue, um, but the X78 mainline brand it just seemed to have paused a little bit. And um, we seem to have 362 at the time, at the time of recording this, hopefully it's changed and same. Um, 36274 um, that's running around at the moment, sort of half branded. Um, fully branded on one side, half branded on the other, and when you're launching a brand, as much as I understand, sort of obviously if it's being done externally, you've got to wait for people to rock up to do the branding, and um, you do kind of hope that they rock up and do it all in one go, um, you do that, so then feel sorry for the operator, um, as they're trying to launch this quite extensive brand, um, and they're faced with, faced with a few logistical complications when buses coming out partially branded. I am still looking into doing some sort of Sheffield Brands video at the moment. I've been put on pause and I've been very, very busy over summer, unfortunately, and then I hope you all can understand. That's why I put the um, two videos in as an extra to sort of, sort of a little bit of an extra thing, um, because I don't have enough free time, unfortunately, to go around to do all the brands as they, that'll take quite a long, long time, and it's a project I'm wanting to spend a long time on. Um, and unfortunately I tend to have the odd day trip or the odd couple of hours free and when I've got an odd day trip I do want to kind of get out of the city uh, when I've got the lighting, oh the lighting's well and truly out there um, so when I've got the odd day trip I want to be out of the city when I've got an odd couple of hours unfortunately um, the, oh I keep doing that unfortunately the um, Sheffield brands will require a little bit more work to them. Um, it's re the reason I'm, I'm catching the curb a lot on this is because I'm used to driving, used to driving the veiling, and I know how that handles. And bizarrely, as much as it is weird to say, when you're driving these different buses and obviously they've created them to such a high realism now, they all drive differently, accelerate differently, steer differently, and can feel it being a little bit heavier. It's like with this, is it, it, I feel the steering on this is a little bit looser than the steering is on the veiling pack. Um, I, I don't know if that's intentional or unintentional, but it feels a little bit looser when you're driving this. It might have to do with weight and things, obviously. an absolute stunning livery it must be said it really must be said i mean we've just got the sheffield's 20s um, brand is expanding as well and um, the second vehicle is now out for that um, 35128 um, that's actually a sister vehicle to one of these uh, <laughs> weirdly uh, but yeah 35128 is now out um, that's got blue interior seating if you remember my sheffield's 20 video where we discussed in the video how 35126 the first one done had red interior seating and although they, they'd done it for the X78 and I thought well that's going to be the interior seating for all the branding and um, it did look really really odd a blue branded bus with blue headrests and a blue interior having red seating and um, it did seem quite odd so 35128 has re-emerged after months and months of growth 
um, featuring blue seating. Um, apparently 26 is going to get the same treatment and that will hopefully make them both look very, very nice. It's been nice to see the rest of the vehicles done for the Sheffield's 20s um, and that wasn't launched um, fully. Um, obviously, I think we, for those of you who have been to South Yorkshire, you'll have seen the 20s. It's a very, very busy bus route, especially at school and sort of rush hour times, and the single deckers on it, um, although they, they do take the capacity, they do tend to take the capacity full and standing, so I think if, if it is obviously uh, possible to have double deckers running on the route, um, that obviously make, lets people space out a little bit more, makes the route more attractive, um, is something that's worthwhile the investment. Especially at a time of trying to get people back on board public transport a little bit more. So there is also in Sheffield, um, very recently, um, sort of this month, the collapse of um, Powell's bus. Um, I sort of do record some of these on the videos in advance, and this will be a week or two after um, Powell's has collapsed. There is a separate video on that, farewell to CT plus Yorkshire Powell's, where I spent a morning on the Powell's buses. Um, and then did a bit of a farewell, including some of my um, exclusive behind the scenes photos from CT Plus Yorkshire's um, time of operation. Um, so do go and check that video out if you haven't already. Um, it was it was quite an interesting one to record. Um, as I have said in the video, um, I did um, part of my sort of experience in the bus industry to date um, was actually at CT Plus Yorkshire. I did it when I was a bit younger. Did a bit of work experience there. Um, did a bit of festival management for them and stuff like that. I was quite a regular up at the yard, looking around at the vehicles. I um, was quite lucky, I used to get um, quite a lot of exclusive behind the scenes um, sort of permission to have a little look at vehicles behind the scenes and stuff like that. New acquisitions and all of that lot. Um, so for me personally, it, it's such a big, big shame um, that they've gone on the, um, obviously, unfortunately at the moment. Um, in the current um, climate of public transport, if you're running a, so a company that's a social enterprise, not profit organisation, in the bus industry it's just not going to work because at the moment to survive um, you do need a bit of money behind you. As demonstrated um, with Bournemouth Transport, Yellow Buses, uh, who have gone under um, as well, a big company. Um, and if you're running sort of if you're running a business model that runs to a very very small profit, there's companies around around the UK that do it in, in bus industry and other industries where they run to a, a small profit margin and pre-COVID and pre-financial um, crisis stuff you can do that, but at the moment um, with companies not being able to achieve that small small profit margin, it provides a very very small line in the sand between surviving and being heavy debt um, and unfortunately Powell's and, and Bournemouth's yellow buses have both felt the same thing with that. Um, it is a shame um, but as harsh as it is the industry does go on. So yeah, the 90 do have yellow um, vehicles, yellow livery vehicles on them so our 14s um, do fit right in on this as our 14 bus. the bell at last minute. I look to make sure there's nobody jumping off as sometimes I don't always see the light on that. And they rung it right at last minute and got quite lucky. Otherwise I'd have shot straight past the bus stop. So I have driven this route a few times off camera um, and it is a decent route so it, if you can tell I kind of know what I'm expecting. And that's because I have previously driven this route. I'm not doing like I did with the 55 with the articulated bus. And where I went into it fully blind. So I didn't quite know what I was going to get. So luckily I have uh, driven this route. Driven this route off camera. So I do kind of, not fully. Because I've only driven it a couple of times. But do kind of um, know what I'm expecting. says as he doesn't realise there's an AI car and um, we're coming down. I 
didn't even realize. I thought he was waiting for the bus, and then it looked like he was walking, like we were just walking past the bus stop. And I don't know where we just stopped. Apparently, we are just on time, and there we go. Pack the horn as I shut the doors. So also after this I'm going to be returning to um, Great Gundor 2 as well, um, I've decided I'm going to do the odd video on that. I did want to um, record this one first though, because Great Gundor 2 will be a very impact video, because I don't like you really popped up behind me. I don't like where that camera is at all, because it makes me look like I'm, I'm within the car. That is not an ideal place to put that camera. Oh, okay, left turn and then done. There's. It is definitely this way, isn't it? Yeah, because I kind of just, I think I went slightly into autopilot there. Easy, easy done with these things. Easy done. So I'm going to try and get back into Train Simulator. Um, the easy thing with Amazon 2 is you kind of just load it up and drive. Train Simulator involves a, a little bit more admin to it, and that's why I haven't done a video on it for a while. Although I do want to return to Train Sim. Um, it's something I, I do miss driving. Um, I really used to enjoy sort of driving all, all different routes and things. Um, I, I, obviously, uh, for those of you that remember, uh, my little niche is the freeware stuff. Uh, because I do think that some of the payware stuff, especially at the moment, um, is a little bit extortionately priced um, for what it is. Um, I do think the freeware, the, the showcasing the freeware products, especially some of the ones that don't get that bit of rating but are still really nice routes, um, is a really, really important thing. Um, is it like in the Omni world, um, where it, it, I would say at the moment it's a lovely, lovely balance between payware and freeware products. Train Simulator is very, very payware orientated, and the freeware side isn't that well, like, like publicised. And there are some absolutely phenomenal freeware maps. Not just like the ones that everybody tends to know about, oh, there's a Thames travel. Not just ones that everybody tends to know about, like in the Manchester Huddersfield that we do drive a fair bit. But also other ones. So you've got. Um, like some of the some of the fictitious ones we've driven in the past. Some of them are absolutely lovely. Really, really are nice maps. Some of them are tiny, some of them are big. And I mean, I made my own uh, map back in the day. It wasn't the best. But bearing in mind that was going on about five years ago. Um, so it, it's still nice. And you got stuff like Blackpool Tramway as well. Unfortunately, with the Blackpool Tramway, uh, when I had my massive, for those of you again that remember a few years ago, um, the PC and the old laptop went bang. Um, I did lose the objects for the Blackpool map. So if anybody does have the objects for the Blackpool map, by all means let me know, um, as it would be nice to have some of the more major objects um, back again. Um, I think it, it's more the custom ones I'm missing, so like the Blackpool Tower and then all the custom Blackpool um, sort of tramway railings, like the wooden railing things on the side. Oh, I think they were concrete, weren't they? They weren't wooden, they were concrete weren't railings. And they're the ones I'm missing, so if anybody does have it, those objects, train sim, um, by all means let me know. Um, I, oh, I don't want to do that. Because um, I wouldn't mind being able to drive the whole tramway properly again. Although, because of how old of a map it is, um, I doubt that many people still actually have the stuff from it. Now I've got about this turn from this direction, but we did get quite lucky going around there, so it's not too bad. Sometimes you don't get lucky. Quite glad I'm recording this um, in game time on a Sunday evening. Yeah, it has been a turbulent few weeks for the bus industry. Um, I mean, the, the week that we've had the Midland Classic Salt Diamond out of the blue. Um, then we've had 
um, sort of CT plus Yorkshire and Powell's um, go under. Um, and we've had the Bournemouth and Yellow Buses do the same. And it's been a very, very interesting week on the bus industry. Um, hopefully, as I say, most of the staff have found jobs and things. A lot of them for CT plus Yorkshire and Powell's were offered jobs with lots of different companies. Um, so they should all be okay. And the same with Yellow Buses. They'll have all been offered um, jobs with Go Ahead, who have taken over quite a lot of the work um, in Bournemouth. A bit of a jump off at the shopping centre at this time. Well, how early are we? 1916, we'll wait a minute. So it was quite quite interesting um, when I was filming um, the CT Plus Sharks from Powell's video because we did the trip out in the morning, um, as you'll all seen on the video. And we did the trip out in the morning and sort of saw a few of the buses and things about. And initially, um, at the start, like when, when they announced it on the Wednesday, um, initially they'd said that they were going to work with um, the PTEs and other operators told that for the next seven days, so they were going to work with them to the following Wednesday um, to try and find other operators before they closed. That then quickly turned into Sunday, where it was announced that at the end of service on Sunday they'd stop running. And then at 6am on Friday morning, they then announced that that day at five o'clock, all the buses were going to call back um, and it was going to be finished at five o'clock. And then as the company went into administration, um, they called all of their, they sent all a ticket machine um, like notification to all of their drivers to tell them to return the buses to depot, finish the routes and return the buses to depot at 3 p.m. Um, that meant by, I think it was about half three going on um, to quarter to four. All the buses were back in depot, and at five o'clock the gates were locked, um, and that was it. And the company was now in administration. So it's unsure what's happening with a lot of the buses, quite a lot of them, uh, sort of rental vehicles on finance and things like that. A few of them are owned, a few of the Tridents and things, probably expected with Tridents that they'll go to scrap unless there's any other interest in them. It's a shame, um, but I mean, as, as you've seen in the, in the videos, I recorded quite a lot of them. Uh, as you will have seen. I've been on every single Trident that seats that Powell's had ending off. I'd been on every single one. So I was pretty chuffed with that. I didn't go on the I didn't go on the yellow one when Powell's had it. I did go on it when C T plus Yorkshire had it. Went on it quite a few times when C T plus Yorkshire had it. Um so that still counts. I wouldn't have minded it with Powell's but obviously it never happened. I was always busy when it was out. Um I went to the mall, so there's videos of all of the Tridents um, on either this channel or my bus videos, if you are interested. Um, but what, what I will miss, um, personally, is... Um it's, not, it's not Christmas yet. Can't fly with the snowman, love. It's not Christmas. I might just put me on the... Oh, there we go, put on break on. Hang on, I don't want to don't want mower down. Midair. I'll let her, let her work across the Oh, I'm Zitu. too. Oh, I'm Zitu. too. I love you sometimes. Never ceases to amaze me, does this game. I hope a lot of you understand that, um, the, the snowman I think it is, at Christmas, where they're going to fly in which snowman. That's my only sort of reference, I should have gone with a Peter Pan reference, that's probably a bit, a bit more mainstream, um, but hey ho, insert whatever flying person reference um, you wish um, for that point. But it was it was a shame, um, obviously, to see Powell's and C to plus Yorks go under. And they have been, um, sadly, as it is to say, have been in decline for quite a while. Um, it's just been a lack of investment and a lack of money. And so we all knew it was, it was going to end at some point. Um, but what, what has been a shame is obviously not going to get to, not going to get to um, sort of get up in the morning, see that there's a Trident on the A1 um, that I won't mind going on, um, and then jumping on that. 
and sort of whizzing off to Meadow Hall and then coming back on, on X1 or X78 when I'm rock so to get me up in the morning. And I'm going to miss that. I think the A1 is one of the routes at the moment. Um, is set to just no longer run um, after Powell's uh, stopped running it. It is a shame because at times it did used to be relatively busy um, and it was a lifeline for some of the people um, that lived on part of the route, not just necessarily worked in the business park. Um, but worked elsewhere, so it is going to be a shame. Shame for them, um, and a little bit of an inconvenience, I imagine. So here we are in Oakford. So we're in Oakford Centre. Oh gosh, yes. it, it just in the sort of twilight sun haze. Omzi 2 absolutely nails the shadows. I mean, you don't get the physical background to the shadows like you do in Train Simulator, but you do get sort of the livery is shining a bit more, obviously when the sun's on them, it just, whoa, looks really, really nice. So I tend to drive a lot in sunlight now, because um, it just makes the bustles look so, so good. So there we go, so that was the 90 service, um, running from Sheepton up to Oakford, one of the main services on the map. We've done both main services now, the 55 and the 90. Don't get me wrong, we'll probably revisit them in the future because it is an absolutely lovely map. Oakford um, is a map um, that, as I said at the beginning of the video, is free to download. The link is in the description to the Fellows Film forums. Um, so is the repaint that's also available from Fellows Film and the repaint pack for First Leicester. Highly, highly recommend the download. There's some superb liveries in there, both past and present. And the bus itself is from Master, Master Switch Studios and is the Master Bus Pack, featuring the street deck that we've driven and B5 TL and LH variants um, of sort of the street decks um, and the sort of um, Volvo Gemini 3s. I've also installed the branding pack, as you can see with the rights badge actually on the bus, and the branding patch um, is also available off Master Switches Studios website. So is the one for the veiling pack that I've also now downloaded. So do look out for future videos where the actual branding will be on the veiling pack buses. If you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, um, do be sure to subscribe to the Andable Central YouTube channel for more content like this from the simulation world as well as the real life bus industry, both of which do intertwine a bit and both of which are hopefully um, interesting for those of you that watch this video. Do keep sharing the Omsi 2 series as well um, because the more people that watch it, um, the merrier it is um, and the more videos I can film on it. Um, and hopefully we can keep on filming videos and things obviously with demand. Um, so yes, and once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.